Hello and welcome to High Fell once again. Uh, weather report up here in the northeast of England. It's a bit of a grey, dry day, but it is chilly and it's going to get colder. So a perfect time to get involved on the layout. Snow drops around outside, so spring is on its way. But of course, we've got the ever-present summer conditions here on the layout. Um, just over a month ago, I did a video which was the development and details of Highfell, and I think people seem to have liked it. It's had over 10,000 views, hundreds of subscribers, and lots of really nice comments and on some subsequent videos that I've just done. And I did promise in that first video that I was going to show you some of the details how the developments on the new section of the layout, one that appeared in October or from October of last year. And that is my version of Tyne Dock, St. James's Quay. And that's the purpose of this video today. But before we do that, I've got to share this. And um, I know this was something which a lot of people did really enjoy, the aircraft here. And I just couldn't leave it as just the aircraft. I haven't got them moving yet, um, but we have got sound. And if you're wondering how that was done, it's dead easy. Um, check out your favorite auction site and look for greetings card sound modules. And um, that's basically how you do it. So without further ado, let's get into the docks. I've left the sound off on this A4 for the moment, so it's not too distracting. Anybody that's been watching some of my other content will know that this is the new area that I'm building, filling in this centre section. There's more work to be done there and there'll be some more videos to come on that. So, we shall, with a clunk, the line is now set uh, for the passenger service to make its way through. to find off. And it's going to come through Heaven Tunnel across the famous Pine Dock Arches. Past the Thunberg Chemical and Oil Centre. And draw up to the platform. So heading right the way back to this section here. So anybody that's familiar uh, with the local area of Newcastle and Tyne Dock can't help but recognize the uh, double structure, which is the Tyne Dock arches. Largely they've actually been demolished now, but there are still some sections available to see. And that's really what inspired me to, uh, to do this. This was actually making these out of the leftover original viaduct on High Fell. When I extended the layout, which I'm just going to show you here, I actually got what I really wanted, which is a much longer stone viaduct in. And so rather than throw anything away, always keep it. That's the modelling motto. And uh, with a little bit of hacking about and some creative uh, painting, and adding some vegetation. So I'm always amazed actually where vegetation will spring up. And some other little bits and pieces of leftover. Um, we've created my own version of one of the Tyne Dock arches. So the flats, well of course they're not ancient. That would be the 1950s, 1960s skyline starting to encroach even up in the northeast. Uh, so we've got the twin towers of Anton Deck. So for all the uh, British viewers, you will know exactly where we're going with that. Um, 
you can't really tell them apart, which must be very confusing for the people that live there. And of course, in keeping with the 1950s, 1960s town planning, they are on the approach road to a major dock overlooking a scrapyard with a chemical works next door because that's just the way things used to be. A lot of the scrap pieces here are leftovers from various parts of kits, uh, things that I haven't used and I'm weathered down. Nice little cardboard tube when it's painted up and then weathered with some rust. It looks quite convincing as a piece of steel tubing. And as I'm sure as the layout develops, there'll be more and more added there. So this is the end of the dock area and I used this uh, rather nice embossed card to do the dock walls, uh, balsa to make the wooden capping. Spent quite a bit of time just checking out various pictures of, uh, of old docks of what they'd be like in the time and uh, you can almost get every example. Some docks would have cobbled surfaces and round the embedded rails. Uh, many had concrete. Concrete's been around since Roman time, so it's certainly not a new feature. To make my concrete top, I uh, used that old famous Italian product, Gaz Air Drying Modeling Clay. And again, in the UK, if you've got a, a branch of the works nearby, you can pick up a packet of that for four pounds. It really is fantastic value. Um, Works out quite cheap, really. I did use two packs, but as you can see, this is actually quite a long stretch. Originally, I was thinking about having a field yard, and I thought, why just have it as a field yard? Why not uh, seen it? And um, something which I think is actually worth doing thinking is always give your train somewhere to go, and that's what made me think, oh, that would be a good idea. So uh, it just gave me another scenic area to develop. The buildings over here. I say this is the uh, Thunberg Chemical and Oil Refinery. More going on there. The uh, You can tell it's a, a Swedish owner because the uh, owner drives a, a Volvo estate and it even matches the barrels of the dangerous chemicals which they make. And uh, these are the old Victorian warehouses or something a bit more modern has gone up. That was just made out of some uh, ends of, of card. A um, bit of kit bashing. Uh, just with some uh, tubes, um, bits and pieces of oil tanks uh, to create something there. Moving down again, a little bit of vegetation and then we move into the station platform. So it's got the name St James's Quay. I'm not a football person, but of course anybody again that knows about Newcastle will know that their football team plays at St James's Park. Um, I understand that they're nearly as good as Sunderland, but uh, I think that's a football thing. Um, dock cranes, I absolutely love these. These are from Ben, who has DAPR, and he's actually rescaled these from the N and double O versions that he does into TT. I asked him about doing that, and uh, he duly obliged. I think they really add something to the scene. Dock cranes are a feature on virtually every dock, although from about the 40s, most ships started to come with their own derricks for loading and unloading. So the actual dock cranes probably went out of use quite soon, but they tended to hang around for a very long time. And it's one of those features, you can't just have one. I think it looks maybe a little bit greedy to have three, but it just starts to give the impression that it is actually a proper dock. The, uh, the line that they run on, is actually uh, just some tra some rail that's been extracted from some Pico Flexi track. That was actually a lot more difficult than it seems. Uh, and then just glued straight down. Loads of different ways. Again, if you look at some of the historical photographs of the docks, you'll find that uh, sometimes the rails for the cranes would be embedded like the railway track. Sometimes they're laid on top. Sometimes they're laid on um, extra mountings and even higher. So pretty much any combination you want, as long as you're happy with how you do it, it is your layout. Um, the uh, I've forgotten the name of these. 
But anyway, these you tie your ship up to. Again, painted. These are just some 3D printed ones um, and then a little bit of weathering. I found some laser cut grids for drainage, but also remember to make sure that there's some suitable staining goes on the other side where all of the grime and detritus would flush into the harbour. So you can see that I have got these uh, fantastic TTA wagons, uh, which Hornby have just released. Um, I did a, just a running video of those and I've had for a while the 10 ton ones. And you see these actually run quite a lot better than when they do come originally. And I'll probably do a video on how I got those running a lot better. When I decided to embed all the rails, it was quite a, a moment because there's quite a money, bit of money's worth of track down here. And to start encasing it in modeling clay, it is a bit nerve wracking. But the thing I did avoid, and this is why I originally went for these uh, grids, was something to fill in this area here. I just didn't want to get a whole load of clay and stuff like that in. I've got to tell you, I started this um, October last year and it must have taken three weeks just to get this base in. Uh, the track went in quite quickly. It's a very simple layout plan. There's nothing too complicated there. But putting this clay in and getting that worked into the shape that I wanted and making sure that none of the, uh, the flanges on the rolling stock interfered, got good electrical conductivity on it. All of the um, frogs have been wired uh, to be electro frogs. The Pico TT120 track comes as what's called unifrog, so it can either be dead or live frog, depending on how you want it. And, and these have actually been all fully wired up. And again, I'm using the DCC Concepts ADSX um, accessory decoders to control all the points, and then my um, Dynamis infrared control, which controls all the locomotives. And all of the accessories. I do have the HMDCC decoders in as many logos as they fit including my Pico 130 East German locomotive. It's actually a Ukrainian built but it's in the U uh, East German colours and it's running a class 50 sound. They were a similar kind of motive power or similar kind of diesel engine and stuff. Well, that was quite convincing. Love that loco, it'll just about pull anything. So there we go, there's quite a few features that have been incorporated. One of the things I really liked about using the modeling clay over using Fomex or even cardboard was the fact that you can really get some extra texture, texture in. I can't say that I did this on purpose, but I'll take it. Um, even when some sections started to get a few little cracks in. I left those cracks in place because I thought that was actually quite a nice feature. This isn't the colour that it comes to when it first dries. I've weathered this down again using my trusty Humbrol weathering powders. And I think that you can get some really nice finishes. They actually work out quite good value, particularly if you get the larger, I think they're about six pounds for a fairly large uh, container. I start with three basic colours, dark earth, smoke, which is a lightish grey, and then rust. And by adding some of the rusty sections in here, again, it just gives that impression of something that would be contaminated with seawater. The rails for the cranes, of course, wouldn't be all nice and shiny and clean like they would for where the railway engines are running on them because these were heavily greased and the cranes were manoeuvred up and down either towed behind a, a shunter of some sort or even pushed by hand um, not always they weren't always motorized and some balsa concrete blocks manufactured just to stop the cranes from going too far from the end of the travel so that's with some of the details I do have some extra plans and um, I have partly because of um, the new TTA wagons coming out I've had a bit of a change of heart on the type of freight that are going to run in and out of the docks and, um, and that's giving me an idea of something else which I'm going to develop and that's going to be going on down this end here. 
probably going to remodel this end to accommodate the new development and something will be being inserted here I'm not going to tell you about it just yet that'd be a nice little surprise and we'll do a feature on that also I have always had a plan for something along this platform section it's not strictly prototypical in the fact that usually most freight and passenger services were kept separate well this is a model railway you've got to uh, make some compromises and I wanted to fit something else in so again there are some uh, features or a feature that I'd like to bring in along this platform area I keep looking at the pictures of it and thinking that looks quite cool and again that's probably a longer term thing because I think it's going to take me a while to make that and I don't think there's anything that's going to be off the shelf that's going to be suitable so um, there we'll go and see what we can do again using a few of the existing items so we've got telephone box and people and bits and pieces and the West Hill Wagon Works. They really have done well to support the the, new, the scale uh, in TT120. They've got some really nice features out, everything from the oil lamps to buffer stops, the brute trolleys, uh, and then of course Oxford Diecast. We keep uh, just released some new vehicles, something which I've got my eye on, a couple of things on there. So that is a little bit of a look of some of the things which I've done on the dock scene. Hope that's given you a bit of an idea. I always thought this would actually work really well as a standalone module if you wanted to do something as an end to end, maybe not quite as long as this, but um, you could just certainly do some interesting things and there's plenty of products that are already out there and available. So, with no more to add at this moment, other than there are still developments to come and I will share those with you. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I say I really do appreciate all the nice comments that people have made and all the support that I've been getting on this. Uh, I'll continue to do this and um, I look forward to sharing with you soon. So keep safe and happy modeling.